The Jets' rookie class is generating plenty of attention. Why would it not? There are four top 40 draft picks coming to the team. But the sophomore class, the players drafted in 2021, entering their second NFL seasons, are going to play a big role in the success or failure of the Jets. Today on the Locked On Jets podcast, we will set expectations as the Jets' 2021 draft class enters year two. You are Locked On Jets, your daily New York Jets podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome, this is the Locked On Jets podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. It's Thursday, May 19th, 2022, and I'm your host, John B. from gangreennation.com. Thank you so much for making the show your first listen or your first watch every day. Big shout out to subscribers to this podcast. And to join that group, just hit the subscribe button wherever you're watching or listening. And if you're watching on YouTube, please give this episode a big thumbs up. It helps the channel out and it helps other Jets fans find Locked On Jets. Well, today we are going to talk about the 2021 Jets draft class. So much attention has been paid to the 2022 class. Of course it is. Jets just drafted seven players a couple weeks back, four players in the top 40. All seven players drafted were in the top 120. Big rookie class, big chance to turn this franchise around. But another key component of of this rebuild are the players entering year two. And I say it all the time. So many times you see a player's biggest improvement in the the league is between year one and year two because now they have a handle on things. When you enter the, the league as a rookie, there's so much going on. You've got to learn a new playbook. You have to adjust to being a pro instead of playing in college. New teammates, a new system, more difficult competition, you know, Sometimes in college, you're, you can be so dominant that you don't need to use good technique. That doesn't work in the NFL because everybody's good. Everybody's fast. Everybody's big. Everybody's strong. So I always look to year two. I, I try and keep my rookie expectations in check. Year two is when I really want it to happen for you. And of course, for the Jets, the key player entering year two is Zach Wilson. And I guess that's the perfect place to begin. And I have to say, I think a lot of the perceptions in the Jets fan base and in the Jets media on Zach Wilson are way off. And that's, that goes for both his ceiling and what the Jets really need from him. I, I think that there's a lot of, there are a lot of takes out there that I don't agree with. You know, what is Zach Wilson's ceiling right now? Well, you know, in theory, anybody could be great. But now we have a year under our belt. You know, whenever you draft a player, you always dream that the guy's going to be a superstar. You dream he's going to be the best player in the league. You know, last year, all the Mahomes comparisons were thrown out because of the highlight real plays he made at BYU and the big arm. And now we have, but now we have a year of film to evaluate Zach Wilson on. And of course, no player is comp- a finished project after year one. But you have a better sense of Zach Wilson today than you did a year ago. So what's Zach Wilson's ceiling? You know, is Zach Wilson the type, type of guy who can get to that Aaron Rodgers, Patrick Mahomes territory? And the answer to that is most likely no. And that's not a, necessarily a knock on Zach Wilson. My answer would be pretty much no for any quarterback entering a second year, whether it's this year, you know, whether it's Trevor Lawrence, Justin Fields. Mac Jones, uh, you know, Davis Mills, it would be no, I would have said it no about anybody last year. You know, it's, it's not that easy. There, if, the odds are against any player reaching that rare air. But we also saw Zach Wilson last year, and his season, let's be honest, his season had some struggles to it. You know, the NFL, the average NFL passer rating last year was 908 there was one game that last year where Zach Wilson had a passer rating above that. And then the two, two others where he was at 89, so he was just below it. So that's three out of 13 games where he was around average as far as passer rating goes. And I know numbers aren't everything, but I think numbers kind of encapsulate the, the struggle Zach Wilson had last season. You know, he finished the season with a 69.7 quarterback rating, only a 55.6 completion percentage, a 6.38 yards per attempt average. You know, these were these were not great numbers. And players will improve. You know, you're looking for a big improvement out of Zach Wilson, but a big improvement out of Zach Wilson is probably going to get him to being a credible quarterback. And that's okay. You know, people act like if you're not Patrick Mahomes, that you're a failure. That's not necessarily the case. If Zach Wilson gets to the point where he's credible, and listen, you want to say he's going to be Mahomes or Rodgers down the line, you know, I won't stop you. But this year, the odds are very much against it. And I think, you know, you have to be reasonable with your expectations for players. Because if you're putting those odds on Zach Wilson, you're setting him up for failure and you're setting yourself up for disappointment. And here's the thing. Yes, it's better to have your quarterback become like a top three quarterback, but the odds are against like almost every quarterback doing that. There's a reason there's only a top three. 
because it's it's if you you don't count on that happening. If it happens, you're very happy, but you don't count on it. You just hope your quarterback turns into a, a quality player. And guess what? Being a quality quarterback, if you surround him with the right pieces, that can be enough. How many times was Eli Manning a top three quarterback in this league? Let me give you a hint. Zero times. Eli Manning was, uh, he, what Eli Manning was, he was a quality quarterback who was on the right team. Now, in 2011, he had a phenomenal season. You know, you can't take away his 2011 season where the Giants really did not have much around it. But, you know, in a career year, you can be great if you're a quality quarterback. Sometimes you have a career year where you, you play at an unbelievable level and you're able to carry your team. But put the right pieces around them, rise to the occasion at the right moment, and your team can do very well. Joe, you know, Joe Flacco, not the Jets version of Joe Flacco, but the Baltimore version of Joe Flacco, the younger version of Joe Flacco, the Joe Flacco of a decade ago. Was he a top you know, three quarterback? Was he a guy who made the type of impact Aaron Rodgers made? No. But he was a quality quarterback, though, on a good team that surrounded him with the right pieces, and he rose to the occasion at the right time. You know, a couple of years ago, the Rams were within a, a quarter of winning the Super Bowl with Jared Goff. You know, people mock Jared Goff. They put the right pieces around him. They came close to winning. The, now, I know they, they lost part because of him that game against New England, but... He wrote again, he rose to the occasion against New Orleans in the NFC Championship game. A guy I probably overrated at the time. I thought he was on his way to stardom. He was not. But the guy who's nowhere near as bad as people make him out to be. A couple of years back, 49ers almost within like a play of winning the Super Bowl with Jimmy Garoppolo, with many of the members of the current Jets coaching staff. Because again, they put the right pieces around Jimmy Garoppolo. Yes, listen, it, nobody's going to be happier if Zach Wilson's a great quarterback. Based on his rookie season, it's probably not going to happen this year. And, you know, based on the way he struggled as a rookie, Matthew Stafford's like the one, the kind of like the hope, because Matthew Stafford is like the one guy who, like, in recent years who struggled like a rookie, who turned into, like, a legit top quarterback and, of course, won the Super Bowl this year. So there's hope. There's hope. I mean, there's hope Zach Wilson could get to that point. But do you need Zach Wilson to get to that point? Well, you'd love for it to happen, but it doesn't, you're, you're not necessarily counting on it. And, if you look at the way the Jets are building around Zach Wilson, they're trying to build that correct infrastructure around him so that he doesn't have to do it all. Because at the end of the day, even if your quarterback's great, you don't want to put everything on his shoulders, especially entering year two. And that's why I think it's good that the Jets went out and got Brees Hall to add to Michael Carter, who, of course, is also entering his second year. We'll discuss Michael Carter in a bit. But it's not a case where you need that. You know, I hear all this talk about he's got this amazing ceiling. Well, you know, he's... I think last year, what Zach Wilson showed, there was one game where he looked legitimately like a difference maker. That was Tennessee. But were there were there flashes of greatness last year for Zach Wilson? I'd say not really, but there were flashes that he could be a quality quarterback. That second half against Carolina, I mean, he took a pounding in that game, still almost led the team back. Um, the first half against the Eagles, where he made the throw, you know, he, he stood in the pocket, he made the throws where you were looking for. There were a couple other games, that I think almost the full game against Tampa, he looked like a quality quarterback. He didn't look like a great quarterback, but he looked like a quality quarterback. Quality quarterbacks win games in the NFL. And what I wouldn't give for the Jets to have had a few more quality quarterbacks through the years. I, and I think that this is one of those things that it's not just the Jets fan base. It's the it's fan bases across the NFL. You become enamored with good reason. I'm not saying, uh, listen, with good reason you become enamored with, by hoping you have like the ultimate elite difference maker at the quarterback position because that makes things a lot easier. It, you don't need to build as good of a roster. You can make more mistakes in your roster construction because those guys can carry the load a little bit better. But I think that maybe sometimes we kind of lose track of how much of a difference just a quality quarterback can make. Somebody who knows what he's doing, somebody who can plant that back foot with authority, go through his, you know, cycle through his reads and get the ball where it needs to go. That's the expectation for me for Zach Wilson. It's not to be an MVP. And listen, he's probably not going to go from guy who really kind of looked guy who had struggles as a rookie to MVP overnight. If he's going to be like that type of quarterback, if he's going to have the Matthew Stafford career, career trajectory, well, Matthew Stafford was not a great quarterback in year two. It took him a couple of years to, to really develop and you know, quarterback development's a, a long game. It, it takes quite a while. And I hear, you know, I hear all these people talking about, well, we need to get, we need to get a definitive answer on Zach Wilson in year two. You're not going to get a definitive answer on Zach Wilson in year two. If you do, it's going to be he's going to be so bad that you can't continue, like Darnold year three. But even then, you'll have people who will look to make a change. You know, I said this yesterday on the mailbag. Even if Zach Wilson really struggles, I mean, there's probably what probably will happen is the Jets will probably try and make it work with a different coordinator because they have so much invested in him. That's probably the the way that they'll go. But you know, developing it's a very long story. Developing a quarterback, you don't know overnight that you got the guy. 
you if you if you think you know you've got the guy, you're lying. I mean, I remember after 2018, people are I argued with people because people were like, well, Cle- Cleveland knows for a fact they have Baker Mayfield. I said, well, hold on a second. That's only one year. That's not the entirety of his career. People argued with me. Well, look what happened to Baker Mayfield now. Look where he is now in the year 2022. It's not all, you know, one one year doesn't, good or bad, doesn't determine your whole career. Now, we can prognosticate a little bit, which I've done here. I think you, you have a better idea than you did a year ago of where maybe real realistic expectations are. But I don't think the book has been written on Zach Wilson. I don't think we'll know the full story on Zach Wilson after this. I hope we don't, because if we do, then it's probably not a good thing. But, uh, you know, the book's not been written on Zach Wilson. We need him to get to the point where he's a quality quarterback, where he's, a guy who's decisive in the pocket, who can make big-time throws from the pocket occasionally, who can run the offense. He can, who can facilitate Mike LaFleur's system. To me, that's the goal. It's not I – mean, I think you're being not fair. I think you're being unfair to the kid, Frank, quite frankly, if you're uh, coming at this with expectations going to be a top five, top ten quarterback next year. You don't – and I don't think the Jets need that. I don't think that's what the Jets are looking for. I think the Jets are looking to build a run game to complement him, surrounding him with quality receivers who can help him out a little bit. If they do that and Zach Wilson plays well, the Jets are going to have a good offense. And the Jets are going to win a lot more games because when your quarterback shakes off rookie struggles, and if he gets to a point where he's playing credible ball, you'd be surprised how much more, how many more games you win. You'd be surprised how much better the team gets quickly. So that's the focus for Zach Wilson. It's not about, you know, it's not, it's not about becoming the best quarterback in the NFL next year. It's about playing competent, quality football. Now, the Jets do have some other 2021 draft picks who can help him out on that on that venture. There are three players drafted immediately after him on the offensive side of the ball who will support them. And we will discuss those players and expectations for them for 2022 ahead here on this Thursday episode of Locked on Jets. Today, we're talking about second-year Jets players. You know, I love the Jets. And you know what else I love? Brownie batter. Sometimes I can eat half the batter just while I'm making brownies. Imagine if you could lick that brownie spatula clean and get some protein in. Well, you're in luck because Built has a new creation, and this one's better than ever. The Brownie Batter Puff. You heard me right. This puff takes up, takes protein bars to a whole new level, and they're available right now at Built.com. With 140 calories, 17 grams of protein, 7 grams of sugar, Brownie, brownie Batter Puffs are the perfect pick-me-up for any day. The Brownie Batter Puffs will, completely ha- will have you completely forgetting that you're eating a protein bar. No need to pinch yourself. This is real life. Just go to built.com to get the brownie batter puff now. And while you're there, use promo code LOCKED15. You'll get 15% off your order for brownie batter puffs or any other type of built bar. Again, it's promo code LOCKED15. It's one word with no space. L-O-C-K-E-D, number one, number five, for 15% off at built, B-U-I-L-T, dot com. Of course, if the Jets win a few games this year, they will inject some energy into this franchise. And if you're a business owner, you don't want to deal with the hassle of energy decisions. You want your business to run smoothly, and you want to pay a fair rate for power. But coming off the back of one of the highest-priced winters of the last decade, if your business was on a purely variable or market rate, you paid out the nose. Many New York business owners switched suppliers out of frustration, but unless they chose alternative pricing options, you're still at risk for a January repeat. That's where Catalyst Power comes in. They partner with you or your trusted energy consultant to produce a power supply plan that fits your business and your market risk tolerance. They have a suite of options customizable to your business's needs, including options that bundle with or focus on renewable energy. And right now in New York, they're offering an on-site solar solution for your business that requires zero installation maintenance or material purchase cost. That's right, no CapEx costs. And to sweeten the deal, qualified businesses could be eligible for up to six months of at-cost energy supply from Catalyst Power. Go to catalystpower.com slash locked on jets to learn more. Thank you again for making Locked On Jets your first listen or your first watch every day. We're free and available on all platforms. And today we are talking about the sophomore class for the Jets in 2021. What are expectations for the players the Jets drafted a year ago as they enter year two in this league? The Jets had two first round picks in 2021. The first, of course, was Zach Wilson, the franchise quarterback. The second was a player they traded up for in Elijah Vera Tucker. And they paid quite a price to get Elijah Vera Tucker because they gave up a first-round pick and two third-round picks. So that was essentially three swings of the bat with early picks to get Elijah Vera Tucker. And I think the expectations for Vera Tucker have to rise proportionally. I mean, I think he's got... he's To justify that deal, he's got to be like a borderline pro bowler, if not better. It's tough, it's tough to ask that, but I think that's... If you... If you had that kind of conviction that he was that good, 
that you're willing to give up all those picks on a team that really was lacking talent at the time, that's a sign that you know you're, the expectations are very large for Elijah Vera Tucker. Now, he's making kind of a switch because he's moving to the right guard. The Jets signed Lakin Tomlinson, and they decided to put Tomlinson... Originally, they talked about moving Tomlinson to right guard, but Tomlinson has lots of experience at left guard, and I think after all the years he's been in the NFL, maybe the Jets decided it would be easier to the for the, to move the player less accustomed to the left side of the line. So Vera Tucker's moving over to right guard. And it could be ironic because Mekhi Becton could be right next to him at, on the right side. And I think la- heading into last year, Jets fans were dreaming of a decade of Vera Tucker and Becton dominating on the left side. Well, you may get it on the right side now. With Vera Tucker, you know, he's a strong run blocker. You want to see him improve in his pass protection. I mean, I think that's what it comes down to. I think, you know, he's almost, I think in my view is almost kind of there as a run blocker. If he can get there as a pass protector, you know, you, you got, then you may have that borderline pro bowl guard and it's the, it's a, it's the guard position. So, I mean, there's not really a lot else you can say. You just hope the guy blocks well. I mean, that's what it comes down to. So let's move on to Elijah Moore. Now for me, Elijah Moore is like going to get his numbers if he's on the field. For me, the question is, can Elijah Moore stay healthy? Because last year he was limited to 11 games. He had really three separate injuries, not including when he got COVID near the end of the year, but he was already injured, so he wasn't playing anyway at that point of the year. The question really is, can he stay on the field? Because I feel like if he stays on the field, he's going to do well. You know, last year, all the reports out of training camp where he he was dominating. And listen, this this one's on me because I went to training camp this day in August and he got hurt. So that's that's my bad. I remember, like, I was watching I was watching him walk off the field. It was the first time I saw him in person, and he's walking off the field injured. So my bad, I guess, and got, kind of got off to a slow start. I wonder whether, I don't know whether it was the missed reps in camp, whether he was working his way back into shape, but did not get off to a great start to the season. And then he really picked things up around the end of October. And, you know, those last couple of weeks, I think, from, you know, from that Cincinnati game on, he was on, like, a 1,400-yard pace if you extrapolate it over the full season. It's always dangerous to do that. Because you're essentially taking the player's best stretch and saying you can do it for the full season, which in most cases they're not good enough to do. But Elijah Moore came in with a lot of fanfare for this team. And I mean, I'm looking for him to develop into the go to guy this year. I'm looking for him to develop, you know, Zach Wilson and he, the chemistry was off last year. And maybe it was because of some of the time they missed in training camp because all reports were early in camp and before I went there and jinxed everything that they were really connecting. So maybe a full camp this year, things will get better on track better. It's really a question of, is Elijah Moore going to be a guy who's great? Or is he going to be one of those guys where you say, he's great when he's on the field, but... And the thing that makes me a little bit worried is that, obviously, Elijah Moore is you know, kind of a smaller guy, 5'10", 178 pounds. So I guess the question is, can his body take the pounding in the NFL? I'm hopeful. I, I, I think he's good. Listen, this, this, kid's good. this kid's a playmaker. We know he's a playmaker. And we, I think we were just scratching the surface at, at the end of last season. And I'm hoping he's on the field this year. I'm hoping he plays. I mean, I think if he's on the field, he's going to be great. And I, you know, is he going to be like a 900 yard guy? Is he going to be a 1200 yard guy? That's, I'm not sure. You know, is he going to be the type of guy who's a tremendous supporting part? Or is he going to be the guy you run your offense through? That's the question, along with him being, you know, w- whether he can stay on the field. But I think, you know, I, I, one of the ways I look at it is a player is either part of the solution or he's part of the problem. Elijah Moore, I think, is part of the solution for this team. You know, I don't know how good he's going to be, but I think he's going to be good. I think, I think you've got a player here. I think this is a guy you're going to be very happy with as a second-round pick as long as he continues to stay healthy. And then there's the third guy the Jets drafted to support Zach Wilson last season. That's Michael Carter, who I think is maybe taking a little step back this year, but not for a bad reason. I talked about this with Bryce Hall the other day. It's not a bad thing that you're knocking a player to backup status because you've acquired a player through the draft who's better. My view is that Bruce Hall is better than Michael Carter. That's not a knock on Michael Carter because Michael Carter now becomes part of just, I think, what's going to be a dynamic one-two punch. I, I love this backfield the Jets have put together. And I am not a big running back guy normally. But I think when you look at the players the Jets got, and when you look at the plan, what I talked about in the first segment, how you're trying to put the right pieces around Zach Wilson, you're going to be able to run the ball. I mean, the Jets, we're going to... this. I don't like making predictions, especially good ones. Part of it's because I'm crazy superstitious as a fan. Part of it's because I'm no good at making predictions typically. But, I mean, this is probably going to be the best Jets run game since 2010. I'm not saying it's going to be as good as 2010 since. So that's 2011 on. Not 2010. 
Not when the Jets went to the AFC Championship game with that great offensive line. But since 2011, this is going to be the Jets, maybe I should say the best Jets run game since 2011. That's less dramatic. But between these backs, between the players they've added on the offensive line, this is going to be an, and this is going to be a run game that I think can help support the young quarterback. And Carter's going to be the second guy. You know, he'll be the... Uh, it's funny because during the during the offseason, heading into the offseason, I heard plenty of people talk about how they need to get a power back. I think Carter is a guy who's a pretty decent between the tackles runner. I think he's got other skills. I think he can help you out in the passing game, but he'll be. I think he'll be a very good compliment to Brees Hall to kind of be the second banana in this rushing attack. And here's the other thing I love is that now you have depth. So if heaven forbid anything happens to Brees Hall, you got a guy you can plug in who's a legit number one back. And that's the thing is that your number two back is now a legit number one back for this team. So Michael Carter, just keep doing what you're doing. This is going to be a great, uh, this is going to be a fun run game to watch. I'm really looking forward to it as we move into the season. But of course, these were not the only players the Jets drafted in 2021. Their late round picks were mainly on the defensive side of the ball. I don't think expectations are as high for them. They're not going to help out Zach Wilson directly, but the Jets are hoping to get some contributions for that, from them. And I will tell you what those contributions are as we close out this Thursday episode of Locked On Jets. Of course, it is the NFL offseason, but believe it or not, you can still bet on football. The Bet Online has NFL futures. So I say this almost every day. If you really believe in what the Jets did this offseason and want to make some money, go check out Bet Online. It's the number one spot for all of your betting needs and sports info. You can find all of the latest odds, news, and sports developments. That includes this year's basketball playoffs. It includes Major League Baseball scores. It includes fights. It includes the Stanley Cup playoffs. And yes, next season's NFL futures. Bet Online is your continued source for all of your sports wagering information, from live betting to esports and more. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and action. Bet Online, where the game starts. This is the Locked On Jets podcast here on this Thursday. We're talking about expectations for the Jets' sophomore class of 2022. These are the players who were drafted in 2021 who are entering year two in the NFL. Now, once you talk about the guys who were drafted in the late rounds, expectations go way down because most of these guys are not going to make it. But we can go through some of these. I think the guy who have, has the highest expectations of the defenders the Jets drafted round five or later last year was Michael Carter II, who was a starter as a rookie, played the slot, got off to a pretty strong start to the season, I thought. Kind of was less consistent down the stretch. But I, I tell you, I have faith in him. I mean, and a lot of people don't. I think he's – I think for for – a fifth-round rookie did pretty well last year. And the slot is one of those positions where I feel like NFL teams have not caught up to the importance. It's an important role on your team. It's a guy who's essentially a starter because today's NFL, you have three starting receivers, which means you need three starting corners. And you need somebody who plays inside. 20 years ago, the slot was kind of a specialist. He'd come in on passing downs because teams weren't really spreading the field with three wide as much. In today's NFL, you're, you're a slot corner as a starter. But a lot of the great slot corners, their late-round picks, they're undrafted. League doesn't value the slots position as much as they should. It's one of those things that teams have been a little bit slow to catch up on. I think if you know if Michael Carter the second improves, he's gonna be a really good slot corner. I, I have I probably have more faith in him than anybody else I'm gonna mention here. And the next guy is Jason Pinnock. I've referred to him as kind of a wild card, played some safety late last season. Some people are high on him. There could be an opportunity because the Jets are defending on depending on Lamarcus Joyner, and you know you don't know what you're going to get from Lamarcus Joyner this year. So there could be an opportunity, and the only other guy you can think of at the safety position is Ashton Davis, who really hasn't developed the way you hope he would. So Jason Pinnock, a wild card, can he give you anything? Well, I guess that's the hope. I guess you're looking for for depth there. I think the same thing can be said about uh, Jamie and Sherwood and Hamza Nasraldeen. These were both players that, who were safeties in college. Jets drafted them late rounds last year to uh and they moved them to linebacker these are guys who are probably going to be more role players it's kind of the reverse of what i just said about michael carter the second in today's nfl you only really you know you hear you always hear the term the front six the front seven today's nfl you really have a front six because of the three wide receivers that means typically either a defensive lineman or a linebacker is removed from the mix so the jets might be you know you might hear the jets are a base four three defense really they're a base four two because on most plays a linebacker is going to come off the field and a, a, the slot corner Michael Carter the second is going to replace him and the linebacker who comes off the field will probably be somebody from the Nasrul Dean Sherwood group because your two starting linebackers are going to be Quincy Williams and CJ Mosley so 
I guess you're looking for them to just give you some decent snaps. I think you're looking also looking for them to play special teams. Nasrul Dean was a big special teamer for the Jets last year, so if he can become a special teams ace, join the likes of Justin Hardy and Delshawn Phillips, the Jets, Jets' two best special teamers from a year ago, maybe that would be a good thing for Nasrul Dean. But I think really you're looking for guys who turn into depth players. The uh, same could be said for Brandon Eccles, who was a starter last year, who's now not just a backup now, but he's kind of buried on the depth chart because – with the addition of two corners, Bryce Hall is pretty clearly the top backup in this group. So Brandon Eccles probably in over his head last year as a starter. I don't know that he has starter potential. I think as your, you know, as your second backup corner out on the outside, he's decent, and I think he'll fill that role well. Last guy is Jonathan Marshall. There's an opportunity. There's actually an opportunity for Jonathan Marshall because the Jets never really replaced Foley Fatukasi, so they need some help on the interior of their defensive line. If he can develop into a rotational player, that's great. Although my expectations for him are really continue to develop maybe on the practice squad. If he can do more, though, that's great. And there is an opportunity because Jets are a little thin on, on the defensive line, especially in the middle. You know, I'm not saying they're bad. They're the one area where they're a little thin because they do have a good defensive line. They've, I think they have good depth on the edge at defensive end. Defensive tackle is a little bit thinner. They have good players at the top, but maybe not so much down the line. So there's an opportunity to get into a rotational role for Jonathan Marshall, but I think really my expectation for him is, you know, if he continues to develop on the practice squad for this year, that might be good enough. Anyway, that's all for our show today. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. This has been the Locked On Jets podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. As always, if you enjoy the show, subscribe to it. Leave it a five-star review if you like it. Big thumbs up on YouTube if you enjoy the show. Have a great Thursday, everybody. We'll be back tomorrow to close out the week.